Get your authorized version of the scriptures, please, and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 73. My wife pointed this out to me this morning, and it's very meat, very meat. Psalm 73, verses 24 on to the close of the chapter. Get your authorized version of the scriptures commonly referred to as the King James Version. Follow me along. You are expected to. And I will speak unto you as though you are, okay? Psalm 73, verses 24 on to verse 28. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Yes, we are to live according to the scriptures, not our feelings, not by the whims of other people, but by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who will instruct us on how to live godly in this present world, being separate, according to the scriptures. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God, I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Declare all thy works. Walk as a living testimony as how the Lord has saved you, and what the Lord has done in you and through you, by adhering your lives unto the scriptures. Verse 26. My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Today, if you are alive, if you have a breath, it is such because the Lord has allowed it. The Lord is in complete control of all things. And if you are alive today, dear friends, it is because the Lord has allowed it. Verse 25, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Hmm. When people ask me, Brad, uh, Brad, how can we pray for you? I always ask for usually one thing. Humility. Humility. Because guess what, dear friends? I have a pride problem. And, um, like I said, people ask me, how can, how can we pray for you? Humility. That the Lord keep me humble. Recently, I have been having health issues. And still am. This is not a go-away thing. Um, this is going to be a long, drawn-out process, if the Lord will. Because I am alive today. And it is because the Lord has allowed it. I have a wife whom I love very dearly, whom um, needs to be cared for and nurtured. And uh, my uh, health problem is, in verse 26, my flesh and my heart faileth. I have been having heart problems. Um, heart disease, apparently, of course, <laughs> Uh, they like to trace things genetically, but um, my mother died and went to hell because of heart failure. She was a smoker for many, many years. I, uh, myself, uh, at one time in my life was a smoker as well. Um, and I'm going to soon be, Lord willing, 47 years of age. And uh, to be honest, my diet 
has been deplorable. Now, <laughs> that doesn't mean that we, my wife and I, we go fast food or anything like that. God forbid. No, but um, we have been, we, I, have been eating very poorly and making poor decisions health-wise as far as what you, I put into the body, um, I've been making very poor decisions on that and it caught up with me uh, the previous Thursday. And um, as I had spake with a brother of mine um, who mentions like, you know, Brad, you're always praying for humility and I pray that the Lord give you humility. And as several of you have um, in the comments of the previous video, have made mention, it's like, hey, Brad, <laughs> um, you know, very quickly, very quickly. Um, <laughs> Romans 8.28, okay? Romans 8.28 is very neat upon this. Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. And brethren, I'll tell you what. When, when you are experiencing health problems that pertain onto the heart, um, it really gets your attention. See, we all say, we all say these things like, oh, uh, well, for example, I do know where I'm going when I die. I'm going to be with my Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father. My wife, when she dies, she's going to be going to be with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And any of those of you who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you and I, we're going to be in heaven when we die. We are going to be ever with the Lord. But when you encounter these things firsthand, it changes your perspective. It really does. And hence, that is what has been troubling me of late. And um, granted, um, right now, today, I'm doing very well, but this is not over. This is not over. And steps are being taken to drastically and dramatically improve our eating and what we do health-wise um, to give us longevity. But but there again, we have to remember my uh, verse 26 in Psalm 73. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I, I think it was Mantle, Mantle, a famous baseball player at one time, made the comment once that had I known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. And see, the church of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, provides for us. Okay, He takes care of us. He pays our bills through you, the church of the living God. Okay, He takes care of us through you. And you know who you are, and I can't name you. Or else you'll have your reward. That's not how it works. Okay? It's not how it works. But see, we can do a lot of things in vain trying to keep ourselves, uh, to trying to keep ourselves, but if the Lord, if your time is up, if your time is up, there ain't nothing you're going to be able to do. And woe be unto us who um, seek to um, shorten our own time because we have made poor choices. You know what I mean? So that is what has been um, ailing me. And like I said, it's, it's not over. It's not over. It's like a wave. <laughs> it goes, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up. Uh, the night previous to this video was um, a challenging evening. But nonetheless, praise the Lord, for he giveth his beloved rest. And he did. And he did. Um, so that is what has been ailing me. And this is far from over. So please do continue to keep your servant 
in your prayers. Uh, we both covet them. We both covet them. Um, and thank you so much to every single one of you um, who have, with your encouragement, with your prayers, with how the Lord has used you and is using you. Thank you to every single solitary one of you. Thank you so much. And remember, uh, there is an email on the channel here. And I have another email, Messaboogie2000, uh, both Gmail accounts. Um, uh, you know, if devils take a liberty to send me threats and insults and uh, rhetorical questions and, and all these stuff, um, those of you of the Church of the Living God, my brothers, my sisters, there's an email here uh, that you can get uh, on the channel. And also I have another one, messaboogie2000 at gmail.com as well that you can email me at. Um, Church of the Living God? Hey, go right ahead, okay? Okay? But I, I wanted to address that first. I wanted to address that first because uh, that is going to play into what we are going to be looking at today, okay? Physicians. Physicians. Where comes our health? How are we about, to, how are we to go about our health? Okay. For example, I, I um, see this book got at the Dollar Tree. Okay. This is a book about uh, something that I'm going to be looking into. Um, here in America, our food supply is being has been for years uh, being drastically messed with, and a lot of the food that we here in America consume is poisonous. It truly is. It truly is. Genetically modified organisms, genetically modified this and that. Okay, it's the same principle with um, synthetic vitamins, synthetic uh, minerals, okay? Synthetic, fake, made in a laboratory, okay? And um, it's prevalent, rampant here, especially in America, especially in America. It's, it's quite horrifying, actually, to read some of the ingredients that are in some of the foods that we eat, okay? And a lot of that is preservatives, and a lot of the food that we eat because of genetic, uh, genetically modified foods and the preservatives that they keep uh, in there for shelf life have attributed onto many things. Diabetes, autism, dementia even, okay, and stuff like that. Heart disease. You know, you watch that uh, video, The Oiling of America. Um, very... Uh, open your eyes there, boy. <laughs> but um, all these things, all these chemicals, all these fake vitamins, these fake synthetic minerals and whatnot, uh, we here in America have been consuming for decades. For decades. And um, to go organic, the natural route, is, a little, is far more expensive. But you know what? The payoff is better. The payoff is better. Good health, prevention, that the quality of life that we have down here, number one, it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. But see, we can kind of frust we can frustrate the grace of God by going against what he has uh, what he has prescribed for us in the scriptures you know um, children who are in these Jesuit schools being taught the satanic doctrine of evolution okay anything and everything that a child needs to uh, for learning is right here in the scriptures 
you can learn true science in the scriptures, mathematics, okay, physics, okay. This is what a child needs. This is what we need, okay, to live our life according to the scriptures. Goes farther than just how we behave, but we're going to look at also what we put in, okay. Now, when it comes to this word physician, how many of you have heard the, uh, the phrase, Jesus is the great physician? You've heard that before. You might have even, hello, uh, my wife would even attest, uh, testify to that too. She herself would be like, hello, you've heard that Jesus is referred to as the great physician, right? Guess what? Jesus, the great physician, Go ahead and find that for me. Find it for me, please. It's not in there. The word physician in the authorized version of the scriptures appears 11 times in the scriptures. We're going to look at these, okay? We're also going to be looking at uh, quite a few other uh, scriptures. So um, you, you want a little meat? Here you go. Here's some meat for you. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 50. First mention. First mention. You have heard it said the law of first mention. And those uh, nitpicking coadjutor devils who uh, start strifes and questions and doubt about words. Um, yes. The law of first mention is not worded in Scripture, but hello, people. The first time that some words are mentioned in Scripture, usually give the definition. You also got to remember, uh, words are, are usually also defined by the context in which they appear. But we're going to see something very interesting. Genesis chapter 50, verses 1 on to verse 2, okay? Genesis chapter 50. You're going you're gonna to note something very interesting. Genesis chapter 50, verses 1 on to verse 2. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. So, the very first mention, now, uh, the word physician appears 11 times in the scriptures. Uh, here it appears twice in the same verse. But, look at the verse. Look at what physician is attributed onto. Okay? And Joseph commanded his servants to physicians to embalm his father, and the physicians embalmed Israel. Now, they were in Egypt, right? Yes, they were. They were in Egypt. So, the first appearance of the word physician appears in the context of speaking of the Egyptians. And also of embalming. Okay? Embalming. Also attributed onto the Egyptians. And for our instruction uh, in righteousness for us today, when in the Old Testament you can liken Egypt as the world. Okay? So, looking at verse 2, physicians are uh, equated onto the Egyptians. Those are the world. Worldly things. And also of embalming. Also, attributed onto the Egyptians. Very, very interesting, huh? Very interesting. Now, we're going to skip some, and then we're going to look at some of these references in context of what we're going to be checking out. But now, go to Job chapter 13. We are going to look at every appearance of the word physician in the authorized version of the Scriptures. So, prepare yourself, okay? Job chapter 13. Verses 1 on to verse 5. 
in Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. Lo, mine eye hath seen all this, mine ear hath heard and understood it. What ye know, the same do I know also. I am not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. Now, now check this out. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Oh, that ye would altogether hold your peace, and it should be your wisdom. Fear the Lord. Okay? But what's interesting here, okay, verse 4 is physicians. Look at verse 3. Okay, this is Job talking to his three friends who should have shut up and kept their mouth shut. In the earlier parts of Job, we read that Job's three friends sat there with him for seven days and none said a word unto him because they saw that his grief were very great. And then Job was lamenting and then they started then they opened up their mouth it's like please forgive me i got i gotta say my piece they should have shut up when someone is going through something that's very good instruction and righteousness for us for we of the church of the living god and even all of you lost people very good instruction and righteousness some of the sometimes one of the worst things you can do when someone is going through some great grief is da 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 is open your big mouth. Sometimes it's just good to shut up and be there. Okay? But looking at verse 3, okay, Job is turning his attention first onto whom? The Lord. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. He was he had his mind first on the Lord. But ye, his friends, who in every single occurrence accused him of something, and we know that God did not allow Satan to smite him because of anything that Job had done. Because the Lord himself said of Job, he is perfect and upright, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. That's the testimony from the Lord himself about Job. Okay? But, look at this, verse 4 again. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. No value, huh? Go to Jeremiah now, chapter 8. Jeremiah, chapter 8. I'm going to let the cats out of the bag, so to speak. Um, a physician... In accordance to our Lord, in accordance with the Scripture, is one who goes to what God has provided. Okay? We're going to look at that. We're going to see examples of that. Okay? But, Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 18, on to verse 22. Okay? Job, uh, Job, Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 18, on to verse 22. Okay? We begin. When I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is fainted. <laughs> Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country, is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. What are you waiting for, by the way, if you're not saved of the church of the living God? Oh, that's right. Yeah, God knows your heart and you just have a belief. Yeah. You poor thing. 
For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Balm, kind of like a lip balm, a putty paste kind of material, as I understand it, derived from roots, trees, and even um, animal products and whatnot. Okay. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Now you put that in context with today. Okay? You put that in context with today. Obviously, dispensationally, doctrinally, addressing the children of Israel. But, especially here in America today, the health uh, system, the medical establishment, Okay, the pharmacists, pharmakeia, sorcery, witchcraft, okay, the uh, pharmakeus, poisoners, making poison. Hmm, isn't that interesting, huh? Making poison. Oh, kind of like the poison crown? You don't say. See, today, which has been for a while, it's not about curing people in the medical establishment definitely here in America which and like I said the entire medical establishment everything in this country is run operated owned by the Jesuit order it's not about curing people it's about treating symptoms because guess what dear friend they tell you you got to have health insurance right it's a mandatory thing or they they like uh, they, they uh, punish you in taxes or whatnot, okay? It's a money-making scam. There ain't, there ain't no money in the cure, is there, boy? No, the money is in uh, treating the symptoms, prescribing uh, drugs for symptoms and symptoms and symptoms. It's about treating symptoms. Beg your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that. I have my door open and uh, my wife is taking care of some business, so anyway... Yes, it's, it's not about curing people because if the doctors and medical establishment cured people, well, then they wouldn't have the multi-billion dollar business that they have, do they? Would they? And plus, the steel of the Je Jesuit poniard is derived through the medical establishment, just like the mark of the beast, I believe, is going to be put forth through the medical establishment. Okay? There's big money in treating of symptoms. And plus, once they go along the lines of making synthetics, ta-da! Okay? This is why, brethren, prevention, prevention, hello, this is why prevention is so important. This is why you got to take your time at the grocery store. And look, hello, okay? Because these doctors who are working for the Jesuits, whether they know that or not, it's not about curing people. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what it's all about. Now, granted, I'm sure there are some doctors out there who actually do care about their patients but then again they're under a system of tyranny derived from catholicism headed by the jesuit order what can they do what can they do now go to matthew chapter 9 matthew chapter 9 now they're going to now similarities are going to occur here okay you go to Matthew chapter 9 Matthew chapter 9 verse 12 okay Matthew chapter 9 verse 12 this what we are going to read appears in type three times within the New Testament now also too you got to remember the appearances in Mark and Matthew Mark and Luke of the word physician Interestingly, interestingly enough, are all before 
the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So doctrinally, still under the law, still in the Old Testament. Remember, Hebrews chapter 9, the New Testament comes in with the death of the testator, not the birth, okay? Very interesting. But Matthew chapter 9, verse 11, under verse 13, okay? Matthew chapter 9, verses 11 on verse 13. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole, whole need not a physician, but they that are sick, Okay? Now remember the first, uh, um, uh, first mention of the word physicians was linked onto what? Egypt and embalming. Okay? Remember that. So the physician thing is attributed onto flesh, man, men. Okay? Physician. Okay? Verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that's not belief, okay? That's going from your self-righteousness to humility, being broken and contrite of yourself. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord and ask Him to save you, okay? But now... This also, we're going to look at Mark chapter 2 now, as you all know, Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, verses 16, and of course, verse 17. Mark chapter 2, verses 16, and verse 17. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, Beg your pardon. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. Physicians are there for the treatment of the body. Treatment for wellness and stuff like that. Yes, our Lord here is uh, confirming that. Okay? All right. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay. Now, the other appearance of this, of that same thing, kind of, is Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Verses 30 on to verse 32 in Luke chapter 5. It's the same thing, but yes, like I told you, we are going through all the references of the word physician. Okay. Only 11 times. It's not that bad. We skipped one, but we're going to use that in context. Okay? So, Luke chapter 5, verses 30 on to verse 32. But their scribes and Pharisees murmurs, murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now that's the, that's the three times that that appears within the scriptures, within the New Testament, okay? Within the gospel accounts, all right? Now, let's go back to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Here's an interesting thing. Here's a very, very interesting thing. Beg your pardon one more time, brethren. All right, sorry about that, brethren. Mark chapter 5. All right. Let's see. Let's begin at verse... 24. Uh, let's, no, no, no. Let's begin at verse 22. 
and uh, read on to verse 34, okay? Mark chapter 25, uh, verses 22 on to verse 34, okay? This occurrence of what we are going to be looking at appears twice, okay? Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. And you put that verse into context onto today. Some people can have medical bills upwards to a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. And a lot of these uh, when they go in for these medical things, okay, some yes, some uh, whatever are beneficial and may add longevity, but you gotta remember. From whence cometh our help? Our help comes from who? The Lord, not the world. Okay? If God doesn't, uh, uh, if God says your time is up, your time is up. Okay? Whether you like to admit that or not, your time, your life is in the hand of the Lord. Okay? Whether you like to admit that or not. Okay? But, again, put this in context with today. Medical uh, things, medical bills that can break households, can devastate people financially, and are they the better? What do they do? They prescribe to you pharmakeia, witchcraft, sorcery, pharmakeus, poison, synthetic drugs, meant not to cure but to pacify symptoms. Hmm? Now there are exceptions to that, of course. We have to, of course. But, you, you put this in context to today. Okay? With what the Jesuit order has released. Their psychological operation that they are doing. Their, the steel of their poignard that is killing people. You're going to go to the Catholics, the Jesuit order, the pharmacia for health? Today? Mm. Let's continue. When she had heard of Jesus, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now, before this, she, this woman had suffered many things, had suffered many things of many physicians. But then God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh come by, she goes straight to the Lord. And just touches the border of his garment. She's healed. And look at this. This is reminiscent to the Garden of Eden. Beg your pardon. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? You might be asking, well, Brett, how, does that, how is that similar to Genesis? Uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he said unto Adam and Eve, uh, where art thou? He knew. And when he asked, Have you eaten of the tree that I commanded thee that thou should not eat? He already knew. But he was giving Adam 
the chance to come clean. He already knew the answer. Because guess what? If God doesn't know any, uh, everything, uh, if your God doesn't know everything, uh, why are you serving Him? Why do you love Him? Same thing here. Jesus knew. It wasn't like uh, we. I remember seeing in some of these satanic uh, Christian movies about Christ. You know, <laughs> he's like, oh, 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 oh. no, 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 no. He knew. Prove it. Okay. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging, thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. I was like, come on, come on, I know what, I know who you are, come on, come forward. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth, which is what Adam should have done. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Our Lord gave this woman the chance, come forward. She did. How fearing and trembling. And look at the response. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Okay? So this woman first spent everything she had on physicians and was not healed, but was made worse. But then when Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, she goes to Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Luke chapter 8. The same account. In different phraseology. But the same account. Luke chapter 8. Verses 43 on to verse 48. And of course, Luke, the beloved physician. Okay, uh, um, we're, there's only one appearance after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ of the word physician. Okay, only one appearance, and it's attributed unto Luke. We'll look at that in a minute. But hold on, okay? Luke chapter 8, verses 43 on to verse 48. And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stenched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? Same thing. He knew who it was, giving her the opportunity, just like he did unto Adam and to Eve, after Adam done blew it. Okay? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me. <coughs> For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she was not hid. Get a load of that. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, from who? The Lord. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people, because the Jews require a sign, for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. But now go to Luke 4, okay? Here is the closest thing where the word physician is at all. It's in the same verse, okay? This is the closest thing that one could say, come to, about scripturally Jesus being known, uh, scripturally, scripturally called a physician. This is the closest you're going to get. Luke chapter 4, verse 23. Okay? Uh, 
Uh, let's uh, let's do um, uh, verse twenty two and twenty three for just a little of context. Luke chapter four, verse twenty three. Uh, 22 and 23, excuse me. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Let's read verse 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. And again, ye, look at verse 23, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, they are going to say to him, Heal thyself. That's the closest that you're going to get to Jesus being known as a physician. And he healed. Obviously, he was a healer. Obviously, he's God, the Father. He can do anything. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, today, today, yes, he could. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, today, could, could miraculously, boom, heal a child who has cancer. He could. He could. He could heal anybody, anything. He could. Okay, yes he can. But when it comes to scripture and this word physician, that's the closest you're gonna get. Okay? Now we did skip one, but we're gonna we're going to look at that and we're gonna look at that in context to, to some verses. Now Physician is for men, okay? The physicians, okay? That is for the health of man, okay? Go to Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. Jesus in Scripture is not called the great physician. As we just saw in Luke chapter 4, verse 23, they say, physician, heal thyself, okay? Just very similar to how the lost world say, you're a Christian. That's what they called us. We never called ourselves that. See? Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. We're going to read this in its entirety. Okay? Oh, I beg your pardon. Very quickly before we do that, I'm sorry. Uh, we forgot one. We did forget one. Colossians chapter 4. I'm sorry about that, brethren. I'm sorry about that. Colossians chapter 4. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I want to get to, to this, this part of it. So, beg your pardon. Here is the 11th. We did skip one. We did skip one, but you'll see. Here is the final appearance of the word physician in the scriptures. Appears in the Pauline Epistles, Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. And that's the last time it appears. Let's look at it. Um, let's see. 12 on to verse 14 in Colossians chapter 4. Epipharis, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently, fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you, and them that are in Laodicea, and them in Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greeteth you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus, and the church which is in his house. Luke, the beloved physician. And when you read the book of Luke, bloody flux, the dropsy, palsy, and also in uh, the book of Acts, okay? Attention to that kind of thing, being the physician. But you also got to remember, Luke, the beloved physician, number one, was saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. He did what he did 
in context of what the Lord had provided. Okay? And there are those that, that argue out there, it's like, well, they didn't have the technology back then, and if they had it, they would have. I, I don't think so. See, you, you, you think that God doesn't have a cure for whatever ailment there is out there? You don't think that? Hmm? You don't think that God has already provided cure, prevention in what he has already made? Hmm? Is that what you think? Look, no, 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 no. Can, cannot our Lord provide all things, including healing and cure and natural remedy? Hmm? Then you might be saying, well, there is, then there's no place for medicine, modern medicine. I didn't say that. I did not say that. But if it's derived from natural things and not concocted by sorcery and witchcraft, you know, poison, then yes. But, now, Isaiah chapter 38. We're going to read this entire chapter. Sorry for the distractions. You heard uh, Zena going off. Isaiah chapter 38. We're going to read this entire chapter. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. His time is up. But, but, check this out. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight, and Hezekiah wept sore. He didn't want to die yet, obviously. See, for you and I today, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Who of us of the church of the living God don't want to go home unto glory to be with our Lord Jesus Christ? Right? But as Paul had said, uh, it's uh, better for me to depart and be with the Lord but for me to remain is more needful for you. See. And, I, I, and I've run into people who have called Paul arrogant for saying that. No, no, no. No. See, Paul put himself at the bottom. The Lord came first in all things. But the Lord had called him onto a specific ministry and purpose which he had to fulfill. And when uh, Paul had fulfilled that ministry, then, okay? There are those also who like to argue, well, if Paul would have obeyed the Lord and not gone to Jerusalem at that time, okay, okay, yeah, you could maybe, maybe, but nonetheless, who's in control? Who says you're going to live or going to die? Hmm? people like to think they take it upon themselves. Hmm. Those who like to do that really don't think too much of our Lord until they do take their own life and stand before Him. Okay? So. But, Hezekiah didn't want to die. He still wanted to enjoy what the world had. And remember, in this dispensation, at this time, he would have gone to Abraham's bosom. Okay? Because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. Okay? So, let's continue. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Fifteen years. 
And I will deliver thee and the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend the city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was, got, was gone down. Because remember, the Jews require a sign. And we live by faith. Or we walk by faith, not by sight today in this dispensation. Okay, let's continue. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. This is the problem that Hezekiah had. Hezekiah, godly king, boot, obviously, okay, obviously. King Hezekiah is up there with our Lord right now, obviously. But he had a divided thing. He, he was king, and we're going to see in uh, Isaiah chapter 39 the outcome of the grace of 15 more years. But see, he had a divided thing. Today, you and I, it's, let's go. Let's go. But, in some cases, it is more needful for us to remain for others, not our own benefit. Hezekiah was for his own benefit. We're going to see that. Let's continue, okay? Verse 10, picking up again. I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. That is something to take note of when uh, considering King Hezekiah. Okay? That's something to note. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver, I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness from day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion so will he break all my bones. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fail with Looking upward, O Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Now hold on. When Hezekiah found out, when Isaiah came to him and said, Hey, get things ready, you're going to die. What did he do? Yeah, he wept. But he wept unto who? He went unto the Lord. Because as we have thus read, so, uh, thus read thus far, Hezekiah at least got that his life and everything was in the Lord, hand of the Lord. You know, he's got the whole world in his hand. Okay? He knew that. He went on to the Lord. Okay? And the Lord in His grace, His mercy. What, uh, okay, we're going to pick up at 16 here in a minute. But uh, verse 5. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Okay? Okay? So see, Hezekiah, instead of going to physicians, going to man, which the Lord could have obviously healed him through that, but what did he do? He first turned to the Lord. The Lord. Today, for you and I, instruction in righteousness, Lord, how, how can we improve our health according to the Scriptures? 
How can we do that? Lord, what, what food out there that you have made and you have provided is good and meat for us? Show me thy truth. But no, today, people are going to who? For their health. The Jesuits, man, Satan. Let's continue. Verse 16. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. See, Hezekiah attributing everything that he is, his life, his, his breath, his beating of his heart was in the hand of the Lord. Okay? And for those of you who are lost, who reject the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who has the wrath of God upon them, even your life is in God's hands. You have today, even though you're poisoning yourselves with whatever it is you are doing, you have today. My wife and I like to sing every uh, occasionally, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made, okay? We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. You have a chance today, friend. What's wrong with you? Huh? Are you so full of your pride? You're not willing to humble yourself? To repent of yourself? And come to the Lord in sorrow for what you did? It's your fault. It's my fault, yeah. It's my fault. It's my fault that he died on the cross. Yes, it's your fault. You know, if you ain't saved, if the Lord don't save you, you're going to hell. That ought to scare you. But fools make a mock at sin. Fools who say in their heart there is no God make light of hell. Don't you, my dear friend, who referred to uh, eternal damnation as a Catholic doctrine, I'm going to be making a video, Lord willing, here uh, this week uh, addressing your reference. It's going to be a tedious video, just so you know. Please watch. I dare you. Hmm? Okay? But again, Hezekiah, he went to God. He went to the Lord first. He's acknowledging, hey, I'm in your hands. I'm in your hands, Lord. What are, they, are they doing that today? No, they're going to the Jesuits. They're going to Satan to get their appointment with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Going against what the scripture teaches, Leviticus chapter 13, people, read it. About the, mm. the they, they, these, these Jesuits, they're like, mm, 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 mm. when in scripture, it's this. Mm -hmm. And only for those who are sick. Oh, but then again, remember, the Jesuits tell you that you're asymptomatic, right? You can be sick and you don't know it. You can have symptoms and what? You don't know it. Yeah, hath God said. Let's continue. Verse 17. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. But thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore will we sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of, our, of the Lord. Now check this out. Verse 21. For Isaiah had said, 
Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. A lump of figs. Trees. Natural remedy. Laying it on the boil, and he will recover. Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? So again, Hezekiah first went to the Lord, acknowledged the Lord that, hey, unto the Lord that everything I have is in your hand. Okay? But there again, Hezekiah, we just read it, was a little, I believe, a little too fond of this world. And then, our Lord, who is gracious, merciful, gives grace, kindness, and mercy undeservingly unto we. Okay? Again, lost person, devil, coadjutor, you're breathing? That's because the Lord has let you, to, uh, let you breathe today. Remember, God knows your heart. Yeah. But now... The 15 years, okay, that the Lord awarded to Hezekiah out of his mercy. How did Hezekiah repay that? Isaiah chapter 39. Isaiah chapter 39. Uh, we're going to read this in its entirety. It's only eight verses. Can you handle it? At that time, Merdach Baldan, the son of Baldan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them and shewed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasuries. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah shewed them not. A little pride getting into Hezekiah. And I, I bet you he thought, was thinking, it's like, well, hey, the Lord gave me this time. Let me show you. And in his mind, I bet you, and I'm not a betting man, but I bet you that he was thinking he was doing God's service by boasting how the Lord had blessed him. If you run into people who call themselves Christians, who are very quick to tell you how blessed they are, instead of first telling you about the blessor, our Lord, Verse 3, Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that they have not that I have not shewed them. He was boasting it. And like I said, like I said, I bet you he was thinking he was doing God a service. Look at how the Lord has blessed me. Instead of, you know how merciful and gracious and long-suffering our Lord is? You know, the Lord Jesus Christ can save a wicked, wretched sinner like you. Because, you know, he saved me. You get it? Verse 5, Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come, that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day, shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. 
He said moreover, For there shall be peace and truth in my days. And of course in other uh, parts of the scriptures, and uh, I believe Second Kings and First or Second Chronicles, talks about how uh, Hezekiah was humbled and repented of his pride. Yeah. And of course, what, who followed up Hezekiah? King Manasseh. And King Manasseh was 13 years old when he began to reign. So King Manasseh was a product of that 15 years. And if you don't know about King Manasseh, look him up in the scriptures. He was one of the most wicked kings that ever was. Okay? But now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three. Come on, fingers, work with me. First Corinthians chapter three, verses sixteen on to verse twenty. Okay. First Corinthians chapter three, verses sixteen on to verse twenty. Now, First Corinthians three, verses sixteen on to verse twenty, is specifically for those of the Church of the Living God. Okay. Specifically, for us who are saved, born again, converted. How do you know? I'll show you. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? You read Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? We are sealed. Those of us who are saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, we have the Lord Himself, the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, dwelling within us. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Saved people only have the Spirit of God dwelling in them. Okay? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, separate, which temple ye are. The wages of sin is death. We need to ever be mindful of this. Try to keep that in mind. When you're smoking. Try to keep that in mind. When you're eating Chester Cheetos mac and cheese <laughs> with the mod sodium glutamate, which is a drug that affects your mind to make things more tasty, to addict you to these things. And, you know, if you're eating fast food, Church of the Living God, that is the one thing my wife and I do not. We do not go to like McDonald's, Burger Queen. Or a taco or toxin hell or anything like that. We don't, no, no, no. Nonetheless, nonetheless, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Become a fool that he may be wise. Fool unto who? Unto the world. See, the world through the Jesuit order and their medical establishment, especially here in America, and of course, I believe, in, over the entirety of the world, okay? Okay? They call you crazy for looking to natural things for remedies, okay? For prevention. But no, health is in the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Health is going to a doctor who's going to prescribe you poison to treat a symptom and has no interest in curing you. Okay, okay, okay. That's not fair. Maybe you are going to a doctor who really does care. But see, even thus, 
even thus. They're under that hierarchy, that system of Catholicism within the medical establishment. And they lift up their nose. Who are you? You don't know. You don't know medicine. We, I have a PhD from a Jesuit university saying that I am a doctor. I know your body better than you do. I know your body better than the one who created it. You see? And right now, today, especially today, brethren, you go to a doctor, especially in my country, it's all going to be about the poison crown, trying to get you uh, to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And they're the ones who started it, the Jesuits. And like I said in the previous video, it's sad because if someone has a car wreck, falls, does a dipsy doodle, and breaks something. Unless someone locally knows how to set a bone and uh, to stitch or whatever. Or like I said in the previous video, they, they dive through the, the windshield or something, get busted up and knocked out, and they wake up in the hospital, and they find out that they had something jammed up their nose. And oh, by the way, we, we've determined that you have the poison crown. Really? Really? Verse 20, and again, the Lord, uh, verse 20, and again, the Lord, oh, wait a minute, I skipped a verse. Aha! Verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. In this context, that wisdom or wise that is being referred to is not in reference to the fear of the Lord, obviously. It's fear of man, of the world. Okay? The world tells you. And who's the little G God of this world? That'd be Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Okay? And what is Satan's church? Roman Catholicism. And what is Satan's army? The Jesuit order. The world tells you health comes from the steel of the Jesuit poniard. The world tells you health comes from synthetic materials, not derived from natural. Oh, some will say, well, they are, but yeah, okay, maybe they are. But they are so altered and so messed with at the genetic, at the genetic level, okay, that what was natural, what God had made, they have perverted. Do you not see that these synthetic vitamins, these genetically modified foods, is man playing God? And I confess, I knew this. But I didn't take heed. And I'm reaping what I sow. But see, there again. If I die, I'm going to go be with the Lord. But my Lord has given me my wife. The Lord has given my wife me. And with what's coming, yes, the Lord can provide and protect my wife. But down here, that's what, what he gave me to do. You get what I'm saying? For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise. Now again, that they are vain. That wise in this context is not the fear of the Lord. Scripturally, wisdom is equated to the fear of the Lord. One who is wise is equated to one who fears the Lord. 
But in this context, it's not so. Is it? Is it? Remember, context is a good way to find definition. Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 12 on to verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 20. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You can do whatever a lost person does. You can eat, hello, whatever the, whatever the world gives you, whatever the pharmacia, whatever the companies, the druggists, the poisoners give you. Yes, you can. It's not, usually, not always expedient. Verse 13. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. The us are those of the church of the living God. Okay? Because the Lord Jesus isn't going to save everybody you covert Catholic, okay? Don't worry, I'm Lord willing Wednesday or Lord willing Wednesday, uh, video addressing what you had said to me. Uh, that's coming. Stay tuned, okay? Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Context. He's talking about physical fornication. Okay? It's deeper than that, people. Okay? Who is the harlot? Who is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? Oh, that'd be Roman Catholicism. And her army, the Jesuit Order. And who runs Mystery Babylon? Satan. Let's continue. What? This is for saved people only. Not you who are lost, who are thieves, and go up another way instead of going the route of repentance, you know, being broken of yourself, your self-righteousness. You don't repent of, like, your sins, and then the Lord saves you. No, the repenting you do is of your self-righteousness, your pride. You don't give up X, Y, Z. No. You're broken of yourself. But anyway, okay, uh, verse 16 is specifically for those of the church of the living God. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee. Fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Now think about this. Going outside of what our Lord has prescribed for our health and going to man, the Jesuit order, synthetic, laboratory created stuff rather than basing medicine. We'll look at that as well off of what God has provided. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Again, clearly, specifically for those who are saved, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And I'm guilty of not doing such with my poor diet, which has come back to haunt me. And there are those of you out there too who are doing the same thing in different fashions. 
Take heed, brethren. Take heed. But now, let's look at a contrast, okay? This is all pointing on to God first. Okay? Our temple, are the, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if we defile the temple of God, which temple ye are, if you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, God's going to destroy you. To hand one over to, for the destruction of the flesh. For the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You're messing around in sin. Or you're putting poison in the temple of the Holy Ghost. See, it, it, we go to God. Right here, brethren, right here is how we are to live. Again, not just, not just in behavior, but also our health. You know, there was a reason for the kosher thing. Okay? There was. Uh, staying kosher, you know, the uh, dietary restrictions are not applicable today. Okay? But there was a reason for it. Because that circumcision made without hands wasn't there in the Old Testament. Okay? Because whatever you touched, whatever you ate, affected your soul in the Old Testament. Okay? I addressed that in the video, um, uh, the lie about uh, faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. If I remember, I'll put that in this video, okay? If I forget, please, could one of you remind me? Thank you, okay? But we see here, it begins with God. We go to God on how to live. We go to God for to find our how to live healthy. Okay? But what happens when people don't? Go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, chapter 1. And this, this part was collaborative. A brother who I spake with uh, brought this up, and it's like, ooh, ooh. He's like, this might be a good video. It's like, Lord willing. So, you know who you are, brother. Thank you. The book... Uh, the book of King, uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 4. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Now, in contrast, we already looked at King Hezekiah. Okay? King Hezekiah had his issues. Yes, he did. But what did he do first? He went to the Lord. And the Lord, through Isaiah, like, take a lump of figs, lay it on the boil. Natural things. Okay? But King Ahaziah, what did he do? Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this of this disease. Um, newsflash, he's talking the, the god of Ekron, Beelzebub, uh, Satan. Going to Satan. You lost people who have fallen for the propaganda, for the psychological operation, and have come in contact with the steel of the Jesuit poign uh, poignard, signing your own death sentence? You didn't go to the Lord. And what's disgusting is you have these Christians in the buildings twisting it and saying, it's for the common good. You're evil if you don't do it. That's what they're doing to all the all the poor people over in Australia. Remember, keep your brothers and sisters in Australia in your prayers. They're feeding them the propaganda. The love jab, they call it, apparently, in Australia. Because 
according to what they're feeding you people. Satan loves you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. But the angel of the Lord, verse 3, but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, Tishbite, excuse me, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God, capital G, in Israel, that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, Satan, the God of Akron? Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Look at this. Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. So see, Ahaziah was going to the devil to see if he could, was going to recover. And the Lord's like, ah, you're going to the devil instead of to me? Good luck, buddy. Here's the, the one reference to physician that we skipped now. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. We are going to be reading verses, we're going to be reading the whole chapter, okay? Hope you can handle it. It's only 14 verses, okay? Second Chronicles chapter 16, the entire chapter. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, to the intent that he might let none go out or come into Asa, king of Judah. Now, Asa was a godly king, okay? He, uh, the Lord helped him mightily, okay? But kind of similar to Hezekiah, Asa had his issues. After the Lord had helped him mightily in many things. But let, let's let the scripture tell us. Let's continue. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, where before in previous chapters, Asa went to the Lord first, but now he's going to men. Ooh, let's continue. There is a league, uh, verse 3, there is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go, break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto Asa, and sent thee the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Ejon, and Dan, and abel Maim, and abel Maim and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass, when Basha heard it, that he left off building of Ramah, and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah, and, and the timber thereof, wherewith Basha was building, and he built therewith Jeba and Mispah. And at that time Hanani, the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Pay attention, people. Take heed. Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were, it not, were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims, or Luhims, a huge host with very much chariots and horsemen? Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. Medicine derived from nature from things that God has created, not genetically modified, altered, perverted, to where all that God had created been taken out and replaced with poison. See? But see, we just read it. We just read it. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, 
He delivered them into thine hand. But that doesn't count for our health, right? No, no. Let's continue. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the earth, through the whole earth, to shew himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Perfect heart. One that fears him. That is broken and contrite. Okay? Therein thou hast done foolishly, as one who believes that there is no God. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wroth with the seer, and put him in, in a prison house, because he rebuked him and told him the truth. So he punished the seer for, his, for what he did. For he was in a rage with him because of, his, of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. And behold, the acts of Asa, first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease... Don't, don't look at me. He sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Now the Lord, obviously, Luke, the beloved physician, okay, using natural means, they're out there, okay? The cures for the diseases created by man through the poisoning of genetic engineering and whatnot, they're out there. The cures for them are out there in nature, what God has created. I believe that. But remember, there ain't no money in the cures. It's to, keep a, to put a yoke around your neck, to have you subservient to the Jesuit doctors. Okay? And this ain't that crazy stuff like Christian science where it's all in your head. No, 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 no. No, that's, that's satanic blasphemy. Okay? Idiot. One who is uh, void of logic and reason. Only an idiot would believe that. No. There's a place for medicine. For physicians. But in accordance with scripture. In accordance unto our Lord. Using natural means. Not taking something from nature and then mucking it up so much. I said muck. Mucking it up so much that it is no longer what God created. But maybe even a shell of it. And Asa, instead of going to the Lord, he sought to physicians. Read Amos chapter 4 sometime. Amos chapter 4. One of my favorite chapters, one of many favorite chapters in Scripture. Go ahead and check that out on your own time. Okay? Instead of going to the Lord, he went to physicians of the world. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in one of the four, in the one and fortieth year of his reign. And they buried him in his own sepulchres, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And laid him in the bed, which was filled with sweet odors and diverse kinds of spices, prepared by the apothecary's art. And they made a very great burning for him. Okay? Now, remember, Azahiah, or Azrahiah, excuse me, whatever. He went to Beelzebub, Satan, Asa, God's the king. We saw the Lord... Delivered him from the Ethiopians and the Lubims. Because he relied on the Lord. But yet in his, in his affliction, his disease, he went to physicians, not to the Lord. And the Lord, you go to the Lord, he'll guide you. Okay? You getting the point? Because think about this. Go to Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. Okay? Now, 
what we're going to look at has greater implications during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Remember, who is the little G God of this world? Satan. And he's been allowed such for judgment, okay? We're going to see that. But, Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. Again, thank you, brother, for pointing this out. Thank you, brother. You know who you are. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Someone who is foolish, living as if there is no God. Who is that foolish shepherd? I wonder. Like I said, this has greater implications during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Our instruction in righteousness. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd! that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. And that is very symbolic uh, today in Hollywood, in the propaganda, in the advertisements. You see, uh, like, um, where did I see this? I saw this, uh, uh, the Star Wars posters where all their right eyes were covered symbolism you know for the esoteric esoteric you know one for the initiated and one for the uninitiated okay okay very significant okay that's that's masonry freemasonry for you which is run by the jesuit order okay woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Again, look at the propaganda and the advertisements and the, the Hollywood posters. That Star Wars one, their right eyes are covered. But think about this, okay? Think about this. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. My mother died devil-possessed. And she went to the, to the doctors and they killed her. With all their pharmacia, their sorcery, their witchcraft, and giving her poison. This is a very, very touchy thing for me. But go to Luke chapter 4. You know, the idle shepherd who won't feed, feed people. But no, we'll mess with their food supply, okay? We'll mess with their food supply to kill them gradually over time with autism, diabetes, dementia, so on and so on. And won't heal people. No, because there's no money in the cure. And those of you out there falling for this, going to the Jesuits, oh, oh, Lord have mercy. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. And the devil taking him up, Jesus, into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Remember, the devil was tempting the actual physical flesh of Jesus, which profiteth nothing, you closet Catholic devils. Okay? He was, he was putting his temptations according to the flesh. Okay? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If 
thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Then you can go back and go to your little cafe and have your cup of coffee. Huh? Yeah, go ahead. Come in contact with the steel of the Jesuit punier. Go get your coffee. Yeah, go get your fast food. Yeah, go have, uh, go live your life. Kind of sounds a little bit like what Hezekiah was saying, doesn't it? But yet the Lord was the one who gave him mercy. And how did he repay that? But see, again, the idle shepherd. But so, go back to that. Go back to that. Go back to that in Zechariah. Go back to that. Zechariah chapter 11, okay? Zechariah chapter 11, what is that? What is that? Verse 12? No, verse 16. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, and the Jesuits are going after the young ones, yeah, but nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that, is, that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. It's all about the money. These doctors, these corporations run by the Jesuit order are rolling in filthy lucre. It's all about money. There is no money in the cure. It's all about making big bucks through poisoning the food supply with genetic engineering. Again, the oiling of America. I'm gonna, I will put that, I'm going to remember that one. Uh, I'm going to put that uh, the link for that in this video. Please watch that. Change your shorts, boy. Okay? And see, this is all because of what? The idle shepherd. Satan who's being allowed to do this. For the love of money is the root of all evil. For which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. For the love of money, men want to are playing God. Genetically altering what God has made. And having you people telling you to come in for the steal of the Jesuit poniard, which will alter your DNA. See, but right now, at this point, it's already too late for many of you. You can still get saved. Okay? The steal of the Jesuit poniard is not the mark of the beast. You can still get saved. I hope you do. I hope you do. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. He said, All this will I give you if you fall down and worship me, the idle shepherd who wants to kill people. The Jesuit order, okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Yeah, good health comes from the steel of the Jesuit punya. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Again, I, I've said this to you before. Immediately when you read that, you think of what? Religious people, right? These, these Christians in these satanic church buildings, right? You think about that. You think about Joel Osteen and the TG, TD fakes, them devils. It's deeper than that, brethren. Your doctor, minister of righteousness. They're righteous because they care about you. They want to prescribe you this poison. Get, to, get that yoke around your neck, boy. They're, they're so righteous. They care about you. Remember, the Catholic disease creators care about you. Ministers of righteousness. It's not just relegated to those of the religious spectrum. It's a 
little deeper. Okay? Okay? And what do these people do? Like, I, you've heard me say the, the Greek word pharmakeia, which is where the word pharmacy is derived, right? Pharmacy, pharmakeia. And if you look that up, that is witchcraft, sorcery. Pharmakeus, a poisoner. Okay? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And I've seen this. I've seen the effect of the poison, of the witchcraft and sorcery from the medical establishment. I've seen it in my own mother who died full of devils and is in hell. Beg your pardon. Yeah, this is a sensitive topic to me. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Oh, no, let's read verse 19 on to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft which Greek word pharmakeia, witchcraft, pharmakeia, the pharmacy, druggists, poisoner, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Witchcraft. What the pharmacy companies, pharmakeia, witchcraft. But Revelation 9, Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, verse 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by, their, by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and, uh, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Verse 21. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor their fornication nor their their thefts sorceries from Kea. sorceries witchcraft sorcery what the drug companies are giving you from the idle shepherd who has no interest in curing you who doesn't feed or seek out but no, they feed you with poison. And Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Talking about the destruction of Roman Catholicism, by the way. Romans, uh, Revelation 18. Did I say Romans? Sorry. Uh, Revelation 18. Describing the destruction of the whore. Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, Roman Catholicism. Revelation 23 and verse 24. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Jesuits. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. That's talking about Rome. But look at verse 23. For by thy sorceries 
were all nations deceived. That this is for the time of Jacob's trouble. But hello, people. Hello, people. Now, you know how Satan is transformed into an angel of light? Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. People want to go to the devil, the world. They're duped. They're duped. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Sorry, if you might know what that's from. Okay. John chapter 1. Verses 1 under verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, because he is giving it to you. And the life was the light of men. I've talked about this before. Uh, if you've ever looked into the eyes of a corpse, okay, there's no light in their eye, okay, because they're dead. Their spirit has gone either to be with the Lord or it go down to hell. One of the two. There's no option C there. But if you've ever looked into the eyes of a dead corpse, a corpse, there's no light in your eye, okay? You've ever had to put down a pet you've, and looked in their eye. Again, same thing. There's no light in that eye. Okay? And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the capital L light which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Capital L, light, that's referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light, capital L, but was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L. To my knowledge, these are the only appearances of the capital L, light, in Scripture. Someone else, if you know of any, put them in the comments. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Meaning, if you're alive, breathing, it's because the Lord allowed it. There is no accidental oopsie birth. Those of you out there who like to fornicate and uh, make a woman with child and then go have it murdered <coughs> because you don't want to take care of it. No. See, that's not a mistake. The Lord allowed that to happen. You, you don't have your life by your own means. It's because the Lord allowed it. Lost person, whether you want to accept that, believe it, be broken of it or not, it matters not. He is your God, and you are going to give an account to him. Where is it going to be, tough guy? At the great white throne of judgment or at the judgment seat of Christ? Judgment seat of Christ for the saved. Great white throne of judgment for the lost. What's it going to be? Tough guy. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, received him, not at gunpoint, Mr. Closet Catholic Coadjutor, you? To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, because the flesh profiteth nothing, you closet Catholic devil coadjutors, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh. He was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Romans 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. 
Thank you for the correction on that, brother. I was saying to three, and it's like, you add it, verse four. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And go to John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. See, Satan uh, is transformed into an angel of light. But the true light is our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you come to him on his terms, he's going to guide you into all truth. Not only a how to live according to the scriptures as how to behave and to align your life according to the scriptures, but also according to your health. much more deeper that you're supposed we are supposed to live by this brethren in all matters of faith and practice let's start doing it John chapter 3 verses 18 on to verse 21 he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Hence, you don't want to come to the Lord, so you're willing to go to Satan. Let's continue. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. And that is not capital. But that light there is not referring to Satan. It's referring to our Lord Jesus Christ. The capital L, light. You're evil and you don't want to go to the Lord because you love your sin. You love this world. And you're putting your trust in the foolish shepherd, Satan. You're going, to go, you're going to Satan for your health. And where is he guiding you? See, you go to the Lord, he will lead you and guide you into all truth for your good. Satan, yeah, he'll lead you to hell. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen? Now go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. And by now you ought to know Jeremiah 17, uh, 9 and 10 by heart. We're not looking at that today. Jeremiah 17, verses 13 and 14. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have fors forsaken Wait a minute. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. They're earthly. They live by the flesh. They're carnal. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. I can hear you, you devils, like, well, it's just talking about salvation and stuff, or uh, spiritual. Um, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Okay? It's not the scriptures all-encompassing to every aspect of our life you say no and you say you believe in the authorized version of the scripture verse 14 heal me O Lord and I shall be healed save me and I shall be saved for thou art my praise you go to the Lord who could heal you 
or he'll guide you onto natural remedies like he is doing for myself through many of you. Okay? Isaiah 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. And then, Matthew chapter 13. Now see, right away you might, you'll be saying, well, that's not talking about actual physical health. Okay, but if you go to the Lord, He's going to tell you what to do because He owns you and you are bought with a price. Your body is not your own. Don't touch that. Don't eat that. Don't look at that. Okay? You, you know your life is going to change. But if you have no changed life, and actually dispute it, you're not of the church of the living God, you're not saved. Your facade is going to crumble sooner or later. But Luke chapter 13, uh, Luke, excuse me, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, verses 14 and 15. Our Lord speaking, quoting what we just looked at. Uh, yeah, let's see. Verses 13 on to verse 15, excuse me. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they, see, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Now, saving, yes, but also, once you are saved in this dispensation, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit who's going to lead you and guide you not at gunpoint okay he will guide you through the scriptures into good health okay now let's go all the way to the beginning Genesis Genesis chapter 1 this is before the flood. We have to remember, before the flood, the world that we know right now was totally different. The atmosphere was different. Things were totally different. People lived to be a thousand years old, okay? Things were different. After the flood, everything changed. The atmosphere, all things changed. That's why Noah got drunk, because the atmosphere changed, okay? Things were different before the flood, okay? But, something very interesting to note. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, verses 29 on to verse 31. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be meat. At the beginning of the creation, man and beast were to be vegetarian. Not vegan, uh, because according to the religion of veganism, uh, which I, I was a vegan for a while myself, but um, uh, as a saved man, okay, as a saved man. Veganism is not healthy. But in the beginning, 
Man and beast were created vegetarian. And it says here, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Seeds. Okay? Uh, seeds are healthy even today. Granted, at this time, the seeds were totally different because the it was before the flood, pre-flood, okay? So the atmosphere, oxygen levels were different. Water was, uh, everything was different. Far more healthier than today, especially today, after the flood. But the point is, seeds. I have, I've, uh, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm eating apricot seed. That is part cyanide and part something else. But together, they're healthy for you. You eat the seeds. They tell you, don't eat apple seeds. Eat the seeds. Eat the seeds. Make sure they're organic. Not coming from genetically modified stuff. But go as organic as possible. Eat the seeds. Even today. But no. They tell you, no, don't do that. That's not healthy. Who tells you that? Who tells you that? Okay. Oh, and verse 30 on to verse 31. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So see in the beginning, even the critters were uh, vegetarian. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Of course, after the flood, okay? Or what was it? Uh, no, after, excuse me, excuse me. After uh, man was kicked out of the Garden of Eden, okay? Man was allowed to eat meat after that. But at the beginning, okay, eating meat was allowed after the flood or after the Garden of Eden, excuse me. I'm getting that messed up. Uh, one of you can correct me in the uh, comments. But, uh, eating of meat came after the fall of man. In the beginning, man, beast, critter, creeping thing, were eating the herb, what does it say? The green herb for meat. Okay? Fish, whales, that kind of stuff, don't know. Uh, we can safely say that, well, if the fowl and the creeping thing upon the earth was green, uh, uh, every, uh, every herb was for meat in the sea, okay? Don't know. Don't know. But the point is, the seeds. And don't the doctors tell you to avoid uh, apple seed, apricot seed, all kinds of seeds because they're poisonous? Psalm, okay, go to Ezekiel, or no, go to Psalm 104, Psalm 104. Some of the information that some of the brethren have sent me about natural remedies has been just extraordinary. Psalm 104, verses 10 on to verse 17. Psalm 104, verses 10 on to verse 17. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, an herb for the service of man. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. Real wine. Okay, I've done a video about that uh, around the 
um, the uh, St. Patrick's time. Okay, it, it's got a thumbnail with uh, the shamrocks and I think a beer on it. But uh, alcohol, drinking alcohol in moderation, scripture is not against that. Okay, we're going to look at that one about the wine here in uh, First Timothy. Okay, we're going to look at that, so don't worry about that. Okay, but there is nothing wrong with having a little wine in moderation according to the scripture. It's when you get drunk, that's excess, that's sin. And you got to make sure nowadays that the alcohol that you're drinking is real alcohol, not synthetic. Which leads to cirrhosis. You overdo it, it can kill you. Yes, but in moderation. God has no problem with man drinking alcoholic wine in moderation. We're looking at it. It's when you do it to excess. You get drunk. And you're in sin. Let's continue. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. Glad the heart of man. And oil to make his face to shine. Putting oil on your face to make it shine. Where women like to put... Um, oh, oh, what was it referred to? Um, a brother made a great reference to what makeup is. Um... But it, it's toxic. Makeup is toxic. And you see all these painted women in advertisements with makeup on and stuff. It says, an oil to make the face, an oil to make his face to shine. Oil. Not eating oil, ingesting oil, but putting oil on as, you know, something for beauty. Maybe. For health. Healthy skin, okay? And bread, which strengtheneth man's heart. Bread, which strengtheneth man's heart. Okay? Real bread. Not genetically altered bread. Not white bread. Where all the nutrients are taken out. Is, is, is this the word of God? Is God's word true? What does it say right there? And bread which strengtheneth man's heart. You can get Ezekiel bread, by the way. It usually comes frozen. But it says right there, And bread which strengtheneth men's, man's heart. Okay? The trees of the Lord are full of sap. You ever had sap from a tree, from a pine tree? It's actually pretty tasty. Especially when you mix it with a little honey and you put a little Cajun seasoning on there too. Or a little brown sugar with this. Oh, very good. Very good. Thank you, pardon. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir tree, are her house. So we see here Psalm 104 going to the things which the Lord has made for health. Okay? We can eat meat today. Yes, we can. Praise the Lord. We can even eat pork today. Praise the Lord. Okay? But you go to man, to natural things. Not the synthetic stuff. Okay? And also, like I told you, like I told you, hold your place there. Well, no, you don't have to hold your place there. First Timothy chapter 5. Thing about wine. First Timothy chapter 5. Verse 23. Paul talking to Timothy. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine... For thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. I, I, I truly believe that Timothy had, was kind of a nervous wreck sometimes. You know, because of everything that the Lord was going to do through him and call him to, onto. Okay? But there it is. There it is. Go to Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. Medicine. Medicine. Okay? Medicine. The word medicine appears in the scriptures four times. Ezekiel chapter 47. 
Now, Ezekiel 47 is not talking about anything for us today, okay? In context, it is for the time of Jacob's trouble, or after, I should say, beg your pardon. But Ezekiel chapter 47, okay? Uh, Ezekiel chapter 47. Uh, let's read verses 6 on to verse 12 in Ezekiel chapter 47. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. Because remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the waters are going to be poisoned with wormwood. Okay? And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth which liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. Again, future prophecy, after the time of Jacob's trouble. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engadi, even unto Enga, in, in, in Iglium, excuse me, they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof, and the marshes thereof, shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for me. Remember, during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming, getting back to natural things. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for me, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. This, of course, is future prophecy during the kingdom of heaven. Natural. See, the kingdom of heaven. Everything is everything that we know now, all the synthetic um, tripe, uh, going to be done away. And when our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ comes back at his second coming with us, it's going to be farming. Natural things. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to be at Jerusalem. Okay? So it, it's all going to be works during the time of Jacob. Uh, during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be all works because our Lord's going to be on the throne and God the Father sitting on the throne, our Lord Jesus Christ being able to heal people and going to natural things. See, undoing the evil that Satan has done to his sorcery and witchcraft. It's all about undoing what the devil has been allowed to do. But we're not done with that. Go to Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. Okay. Proverbs 17 is actually the first reference of medicine in the scriptures. Proverbs 17. <laughs> Verses 18 on to verse 22. Proverbs 17, verse 18, on to verse 22. 
A man void of understanding striketh hands, and become a surety in the presence of his friend. A man void of understanding, departing from evil, going to the world, you know, the foolish shepherd, so you can get your coffee and donuts. Yeah. He loveth, he loveth transgression that loveth strife. All these coadjutor devils, they love strife. And he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a forward heart findeth no good. And he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that begetteth a fool, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God, doeth it to his sorrow. And the father of a fool hath no joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Merry heart doeth good like a medicine? Do you have joy in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he your joy? Does the Lord make you merry? Oh, no, you're, you're going to the world, aren't you? Go to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. We're almost done. We're almost done. Jeremiah chapter 30. Okay, what do I see? Ah. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 10 on to verse 17. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from, from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Yes, we are all for our instruction in righteousness, but the general truth is we are all going to receive for what we have done in our body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay? Remember that. We are going to reap what we sow, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, let's continue. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable. Those who have hard hearts, who have made their choice to serve the devil, and thy wound is grievous. Ah! Thy wound is grievous! Ah! -ha! I caught myself, brother. I caught myself. And thy wound is grievous. I love you, by the way, brother. Thank you. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. No healing medicines. See, you go outside the Lord, what hope do you have? Whereunto will you go? Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has the words of eternal life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? You go outside of that, what hope have you? He will lead you and guide you into all truth. But you go here to the world, the foolish shepherd who is leading you on to death. There is none to plead thy cause thou hast, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Remember, there's no money in the cure. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable, for the multitude of thine iniquity. Thy sorrow is incurable, and a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. 
Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee. Who will? The Lord will. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Again, from whence cometh our help? Dear lost person, don't go to the world, Satan, in the Jesuit order for good health. If you already have done that, there's still time. You can, the Lord can save you. You can come to the Lord on His terms. He can save you. Okay? You're not without hope. And incidentally, I have, I, there's no way. You hear these Christians saying, oh, Jesus would have us to run in to the steel of the Jesuit poignard. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? But those are the church of the living God. We go to the Lord. And we warn you. Beware of those who are Christian and not of the church of the living God. There is a difference, by the way. Because remember, Catholics are Christians. There are many people who are Christians, but they're not of the church of the living God. Jeremiah chapter 46. Jeremiah chapter 46. And we will be done. Jeremiah chapter 46. Verses 8 on to verse 11. Verses 8 on to verse 12. In Jeremiah chapter 46. Then we will be done. Jeremiah 46, verses 8 on to verse 12. Egypt riseth up like a flood, and his waters are moved like the rivers. And he saith, I will go up and will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle the that handle and bend the bow. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance. That he may avenge him of his adversaries. All you coadjutor devils, you Jesuits, you're going to get what's coming to you. This is your best life now. Roll in your filthy lucre. God help you. And the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate, and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up on into Gilead, and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt, in vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. The nations have heard of thy shame, and thy cry hath filled the land, for the mighty man hath stumbled against the mighty, 
and they are fallen both together. Look at verse 11. The nations have heard of thy shame, and thy cry hath filled the land. For the mighty man hath stumbled against the mighty, and they are both, and they are fallen both together. I just read verse 12. <laughs> Go up on into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. And we see the medicine contrasted in Ezekiel and Proverbs. Both those appearances are of a positive connotation. But here in Jeremiah, more on the negative side, wouldn't you say? Half and half. See, the Lord has use for medicines that are derived from what He made. I am fully persuaded that the God who created everything, everything, even you, me, the God that created all things, somewhere out there, there is a cure for whatever it is that ails us. But see, the, the instruments of a foolish shepherd, genetically modified food, altering things, coming up with synthetic vitamins, synthetic minerals, synthet uh, witchcraft, sorcery, druggists, poison. And that's good health. Who do you turn to? Who are you going to go to, dear friend? Oh, you're going to trust the Jesuit-trained doctors, ministers of righteousness, yeah, they got a plaque on their wall. They went to whatever Jesuit college. Trained for years and years and years. All to introduce you into what? Onto what? Steal of the Jesuit poniard? Now again, you know, I'm not talking about um, uh, physicians and doctors such as uh, stuff like that who set bones, who sew up wounds and stuff like that. But remember, brethren, what we've been looking at, a true, a true physician is number one of the church of the living God. Number two, seeks to what the Lord has made. Natural. Natural. Because out there in what God hath created is the cure for all things, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. That is going to be it for this video. <laughs> uh, like I said, this has been a very um, this has been a very trying time for the both of us. But then again, it's been a very glorious time. The Lord has humbled your servant, and we thought we were saving money, the Lord's money, in going the cheap route, but. Good health, according to what our Lord hath created. Unfortunately, today is going to cost you money. And here we think we were being wise, going the cheaper route. But no. See, I know a lot of you don't want to admit this because some of you, I'm not talking to the Church of the Living God, okay? And not even you Jesuit coadjutor devils. See, you're serving your God, little G God, Satan. Okay, that's who you're serving. But you, you people out there, um, you evolutionists and all you crazy people, <laughs> your life, your breath, your time, everything that you have is in the hand of God. In any given moment, our Lord can kill you. In any given moment, He can... Stop you just like that. Why not go to him first? But no, you you need to you need to uh, go to the devil, the world, and trust them with their sorcery, their witchcraft to cure you. 
search the scriptures. Look up natural remedies. They're out there. They're out there. Consider these things, people. Especially in light of these times right now. Please consider these things. And again, thank you so much to all of you, Church of the Living God, who have prayed for me, for my wife, for us. Thank you so much, all of you. We love you so very much. And thank you. That's going to be it. Um, the, hopefully, Lord willing, uh, tomorrow we have some things planned. Uh, tomorrow will be Tuesday, the third day of the week. <laughs> Yesterday, I kept saying to my wife, uh, I, I said to my wife a couple times, well, tomorrow's Tuesday. And she's like, no, tomorrow's Monday. It's like, oh, yeah, because Sunday's the first day of the week. Uh, Lord willing, there um, there will be another video this Wednesday. Got videos coming, all prepared. It's just when the Lord says do them. That's that's the thing. So, and uh, like I had made reference in this video, um, onto the one closet Catholic guy who quoted me. Uh, what was it? When did you quote me? And totally destroyed to you know because you're a closet closet Catholic. First Timothy four nine to eleven. We're gonna we're gonna go through that. We're gonna go through that, and so that's Lord willing, Lord willing. That's what may be coming next. Lord willing, it's up to him. It's not up to me. This isn't up to me. The minute you think you, it's up to you, Lord will hand you over to the destruction of the flesh. So, anyway, gotta go. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you. And remember, if, if these evil devils harass me in emails, brethren, 